It had been two years since Joe Frazier had won a hard-fought decision against Muhammad Ali. Frazier had defended his championship twice after fighting Ali, and Ali had defeated nine straight competitors. All of the world was demanding a rematch. Frazier intended that to happen, but first, he set his sights on the number one contender. George Foreman was a 4-1 to underdog coming into the fight, and Frazier expected him to be a mere stepping stone on his path to a rematch with Muhammad Ali. But George Foreman would be anything but easy. By the time Foreman fought Frazier, he had racked up 37 victories in just three years. Most of them ended by knockout in the first few rounds. It was already becoming apparent that Foreman had possibly the greatest punching power of any boxer or perhaps any fighter in history. But Foreman swung wide and seemed to lack technique. As such, Frazier was expected to teach him a lesson in real boxing. The night came and the two men met in the middle of the ring. Frazier rocked back and forth, but Foreman stood stock still, staring Frazier down, looking eerily calm. Not a trace of fear in his eyes. The two men rushed forward. Foreman threw first, his wide hook backed Frazier up immediately, something it had taken Muhammad Ali nine rounds to do. Frazier bounced right back into the center of the ring and leaped into his signature lead hook. The punch was partially blocked, but it was on target, and now it was Foreman's turn to back up. But before Frazier could follow up, Foreman framed off of his shoulder to maintain distance. Frazier pursued, and this time, Foreman used both hands to block his entry. Undeterred, Frazier pressed in again, attempting to get inside Foreman's reach. And yet again, Foreman stopped his advance, this time pulling Frazier down as he stepped away. Frustrated, Frazier tried to punch his way in, stepping in deep with the hard right. But Foreman smoothly parried his punch and turned Frazier as he pivoted away at 90 degrees, like a matador escaping a bull. Frazier, the man who could pressure anybody, couldn't even touch Foreman and was being thrown around the ring like a child. This was partially due to Foreman's size, but Frazier had humbled many giants before. This was the heavyweight division after all. The problem was that by focusing only on Foreman's punching power, Frazier and the rest of the world had entirely overlooked the rest of Foreman's skill set. What was happening, essentially, was a clash of styles. Frazier was an aggressive pressure fighter. Rather than use the traditional footwork for cutting off the ring, Frazier instead came right at his opponents, relying on his erratic head movement to make them miss, and ducking in under their punches to catch them with his powerful leaping hook. When Frazier got into close range, he wore down his competitors with constant wrestling and body shots. Nobody had been able to keep Frazier at bay for long. But Foreman's defense was something Frazier had never seen. Foreman relied on a number of old boxing techniques that had mostly fallen out of favor by the time he began to make a name for himself. Rather than use head movement or shell up behind a tight guard, Foreman would stop his opponent's punches before they began by pushing at their arms, shoulders, or gloves. He would employ leverage guards, shooting his arms out not to strike, but to block incoming punches. He would pin and pull at his opponent's arms when they got close, disturbing their balance. And for such a big man, Foreman had highly underrated lateral movement, using his fast feet to create new angles of attack and come in from the side. When his opponents pressed him, he would stiff arm them to keep distance, pushing them down and steering himself away. All of these techniques allowed for Foreman to dictate his position and keep his well-balanced, upright posture. This was the other half of Foreman's style, and it allowed him the ability to set up and land wide, powerful swings that his opponents would have otherwise been able to easily evade. And Fraser's style left him especially susceptible to these techniques. His low crouch let Foreman easily frame off his back and shoulders and push him down. The way he charged straight in allowed Foreman to sidestep him easily and pin Foreman's lead arm before he had a chance to throw his hook. And Frazier's preference for wide, looping punches meant that Foreman could reliably intercept them with linear, straight-arm blocks. Once Foreman had established his defense, he became more aggressive. Foreman caught Frazier with his first uppercut, 
and missed with his second. Frazier responded with the lead hook and tried to move in, but Foreman pinned his arms and then pushed him away. The fight was now becoming more competitive. Foreman's punches were sailing harmlessly over Joe's head, but at the same time, Frazier was getting outmaneuvered every time he tried to get into his preferred range. But the stalemate ended when Foreman caught Frazier, first driving a hard uppercut into Frazier's crossguard off of his jab, and then timing him as he came up to land a tight lead hook. Frazier moved in, ate another jab, weaved under a cross, and moved with the lead hook before leaping into his own. Foreman blocked it, but then Frazier charged in. Rather than re-establish distance, Foreman held his position and threw. Frazier drove his head into his chest and landed a hard body shot. He'd just proven that, given time, he may be able to get into close range, where he could wear Foreman down. But then, Foreman landed a single jab. A jab from Foreman was all it took to stagger and to unbalance Frazier, a man who had taken a barrage of hard rights from Muhammad Ali. From this point on, Foreman's jab would frustrate Frazier just as much as Foreman's grappling techniques. Frazier was used to taking a few grazing shots as he came in, but usually, he more than paid it back when he got inside. But now, the ability to close distance had been taken away from Frazier, and he could only bob and weave at mid-range safely for so long. And Foreman was able to track Frazier's head movement partially through touch, pinning his hand to Frazier's head and driving him right into his power shots. At this point, Foreman had lost all respect for him, and he was getting away with just pushing Frazier back to the center of the ring. Foreman's jabs began to land at will. Frazier was still able to avoid most of Foreman's more powerful follow-up punches, but his senses were dulled, and he was losing his timing. Most fighters would have circled, jabbed, tried to clear their head, but it wasn't in Frazier to fight defensively, and besides, Frazier found safety on the inside. He stood his ground, bobbing and weaving, trying to find a way forward. But then, Foreman landed one more hard jab. Frazier's head snapped back. He stood his ground, dipped down, and ran right into George Foreman's uppercut. Frazier went down. This was against anyone's expectations. This was Joe Frazier. But now, he fell to the canvas in round one. The announcer uttered the now iconic words, down goes Frazier, down goes Frazier. Joe got back up, he took his count, and he came back ready to fight. But Foreman sensed victory. The title was right in front of him. All he had to do was take it. Both men came out swinging, Foreman eager to claim victory and Frazier desperate to stay in the fight. At first, neither man landed anything really significant. Foreman swung wide, putting everything he had into his punches. But Frazier's tight boxing forced him to pay better attention. Foreman narrowly avoided getting caught several times by Frazier's hooks, which still had fight-stopping power behind them. Foreman refocused, and Frazier's head movement saved him from multiple knockout punches. It's crazy to think that any one of the blows Frazier narrowly ducked under would have sent most ordinary men to the hospital, if not the morgue. Joe was surviving, but he was backing up, and eventually, another of Foreman's jabs caught Frazier, and he felt his back bounce against the ropes. Throughout Foreman's barrage, Frazier continued to fight back, ignoring the punches that hit him to load up on his own. Foreman stood at length, entirely composed, as the punches that had sent multiple contenders crashing to the ground sailed by mere inches away. Foreman's jab was making the difference now, keeping Frazier just far enough away to avoid his punches. Even Foreman's jab contained an element of guard manipulation to it. He used it to paw and tear Frazier's guard down repeatedly to make way for heavier punches. Frazier was getting punished and rapidly losing ground. From Foreman's corner, the great Archie Moore yelled, Underneath! Foreman took the advice. Again, it was an uppercut that brought Joe Frazier down. Frazier got up, wobbling, trying to regain his footing. There was only a few seconds left in the round. Again, Frazier did not try to circle or buy time to recover. Again, Frazier charged into Foreman. 
And again, he fell. Frazier did make the count, and the bell rung. He had one minute to recover. Frazier would come out to fight for the second round, but he was dazed and badly hurt. So at this point, it's not worth mentioning the technical aspects of such a one-sided fight. But there is one thing to take note of, and that is how many times Joe Frazier got back up off of the canvas to keep coming at George Foreman as if he'd been winning the fight the entire time. After the third knockdown of the second round and the sixth of the entire fight, the referee finally called a TKO for George Foreman. When the fight was stopped, Frazier, dazed and wobbling, was still willing to fight. Even Muhammad Ali's trainer had been screaming from the crowd for the fight to end, scared that the champion would die in the ring. Foreman had reached the pinnacle of his career, what every heavyweight aspired to be. He was the new champion of the world. He seemed unstoppable. Frazier, for his part, would now go on to rematch Ali. But the circumstances had changed drastically, and this time, they would not be fighting each other for the championship. They would be fighting for a chance to fight George Foreman and take the belt back. Thanks for listening. Subscribe to stay tuned for more fight and technique breakdowns. If you're interested in how George Foreman generated so much power, you can buy my book, Power of the Pros. If you want to up your footwork game, you can pre-order my book, Footwork Wins Fights, out on the 28th. From the Modern Martial Artist, this has been David Christian, wishing you happy training.